Okay, good afternoon. Today we're going to um, look at differentiating a power series, integrating a power series, and then finding the interval of convergence for each. Before we do this, and this is not in your notes, but before we do this, let us begin by um, reviewing the power rules for de derivatives. So if you recall, um, when you t if you have x to the n, and to take the power rule to differentiate that, remember what we do is we just move in to the front and we subtract 1 from the exponent. If we're integrating x to the n, our process is the opposite. We add 1 to the exponent and then we divide by the exponent. So that's just a review of calculus AB, but we're going to need those skills and to do what we're going to do now. So if you would turn with me, this is in your notes on page 5, I believe. Yes, at the bottom of page 5. This is a power series centered at C. It has a radius of convergence, which we were able to find in the last video. When we get ready to differentiate this, we ignore everything other than the x expression. Everything else we treat as if it is a constant. So what we're going to do is simply bring down the n, multiply by the exponent, and then subtract 1 from the exponent to integrate it. I'm sorry, to differentiate it. We could also differentiate each term individually, and that's what they've done here. So when I differentiate this, I'm simply left, well, a to the 0 would be 0, because that's a constant. Then the derivative of this, well, this is to the first power, so that comes down. And then I would subtract 1 from the exponent, so that goes to just 1. So that's why I have a sub 1 here. This would be 2 a sub 2, and I subtracted 1 from the exponent. So I can differentiate term by term, or I can differentiate the entire power series. The same for the integral. For the integral, remember what, I, what I've done is I'm adding 1 to n and then dividing by the new exponent. And I can do that for the entire power series, or I can do it term by term, which is what we've done here. Now, the neat thing about this, when we're doing this, the radius of convergence remains the same as the original series. The only thing that could change are the endpoints. So once we find the radius of convergence for the original series, when I differentiate or integrate, I don't have to find the radius of convergence again. I just need to check the endpoints. So that will be the only thing that changes, could be the endpoints. All right, let's do an example. We're going to start by just finding the interval of convergence for the original formula. And remember, uh, we're going to use the ratio test. And so we take the limit. And as you're doing this, you have to write the limit as n approaches infinity to get full credit. The absolute value of negative 1 to the n plus 1, x minus 5 to the n plus 1. I guess this should be n plus 2 then, over n plus 1, 5 to the n plus 1. And then we multiply that by the original, the reciprocal of the original. So we have n 5 to the n over x minus 5 to the n. Now notice that I sort of ignored the alternating part. And that's because all that's doing is making it positive and negative. And since we're taking the absolute value, it's inconsequential. So we can actually just kind of ignore the, the alternating part since we're taking the absolute value of this. Okay, so what happens to this? Um, the x to the 5 to the n plus 1 becomes, I'm trying to change colors here. So um, this becomes x minus 5 to the n times x minus 5 to the first power. And this is n plus 1, and this is 5 to the n times 5. Just kind of breaking that up a little bit. So what's going to cancel? This cancels with this. Uh, the n's and the n plus 1 would cancel. The 5n and the 5n cancel. So I am left with, in a different color, the limit as n approaches infinity, uh, the absolute value of x minus 5 over 5. 
and we know that has to be less than 1. So once again, we set this up. We do negative um, 1 multiplied by 5. We're going to get negative 5 is less than x minus 5 is less than 5. Adding 5 to both sides, I get 0 is less than x is less than 10. Now I need to check the endpoints to see if it converges at the endpoints. So now I do need to go back and consider the alternating part of this. So if I check 0, and I'm trying to write this so I don't lose it, but I think I'm going to lose the top of this, but that's okay. So if I check 0, I get negative 1 to the n plus 1. So I'm, I'm putting in 0 for x. So that will be negative 5 to the n over n 5 to the n. Well, we have to see if this is going to alternate, if this will continue to alternate. Because now I have two alternating parts here. So I have negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the first power. And this would be negative 1 to the nth times 5 to the nth. Well, we can see that the 5 to the n's will cancel each other out. And so the question is, will this alternate? Well, this negative 1 to the n times this negative 1 to the n actually just becomes positive 1 to the n. So I have negative 1 out here, but that's not alternating. That's going to remain negative all the time. And then this negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the n just becomes 1 to the nth power over n. And that will diverge because it's not alternating. So the 0 diverges. Let's check the 10. So when I substitute 10 back into the original, I get, so I'm checking 10, I get negative 1 to the n plus 1, and I have 10 minus 5, which is just going to be positive 5 to the nth over n 5 to the nth. These cancel, but now this continues to alternate. So this is going to converge by the alternating series test. So my uh, re, um, interval of convergence would be from 0 not included to 10 included. Okay? So that was a review of what we did yesterday. Now let's look at finding the derivative. When we find the derivative, everything other than the x part of this is considered a constant. So all of this is considered a constant. So I can just bring all of that out. So negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n 5 to the nth power. Because all of this is considered a constant. And what I am differentiating is simply this portion of it. <coughs> and so we're going to use the rules that we talked about earlier. What happens to this n? The n drops. So all of this goes out into the front because it's a constant. This n is going to drop, so I have n, and then I have x minus 5 to the n minus 1. And that is the derivative of that. Now, we can simplify it by, but you see the n's cancel. And so I'm left with negative 1 to the n plus 1 times x minus 5 to the n minus 1 all over 5 to the nth power. Now, my radius, my interval of convergence and my radius of convergence remain the same. The only difference is that my endpoints can change. So I don't have to go through all of these steps again. I know that it's going to be from 0 to 10. I just need to determine if 0 is included and if 10 is included. So I just have to check my endpoints. That's all I have to do here is just check the endpoints. So I'm going to check 0. And I am putting 0 into this expression. So I have negative 1 to the n plus 1. 0 minus 5 will give me negative 5 to the n minus 1 over 5 to the nth. And once again, I need to simplify that. So simplifying this to see if it's going to continue to alternate, I'd have negative 1 to the nth times negative 1 to the first power. 
and have from there's a negative one inside of this. So this would be negative one to the n times negative one to the negative one. Um, and then that would be five to the nth and five to the negative first power. That's kind of yucky there, right? Over five to the nth. And the n went away. So I just have to see if this is going to converge. And I'm looking at this thinking this is not going to converge because my 5 to the nth will cancel. And all that's left there is just this 5, but that's a constant now. And I have this negative 1 to the n. Well, that goes away because that's just going to be 1 to the nth. And then I have this negative 1 times this negative 1, so that's 1. So all I'm left with really is just 1 fifth, and that's going to diverge. So we can say that at 0, it still diverges. And then we have to check 10. So again, we place 10 into this expression. So I get negative 1 to the n plus 1. 10 minus 5 is just 5 to the n minus 1 over 5 to the nth. And from what I can tell, that this would diverge as well. Why? Because this 5 to the nth and this 5 to the nth is canceled. I still have this 5 to the negative 1 out there, but that's just a constant. So um, everything else went away so that it diverges at 10 as well. So my interval of convergence is now 0 to 10. Neither of them are included. All righty. Let's do the um, last one where we have to find the integral of f to the x. And once again, finding the integral, we treat everything like it's a constant. So what I end up with, I'm running out of room here. Sorry about that. I'm going to end up with negative 1 to the n plus 1 n 5 to the nth times the integral of x minus 5 to the nth power because everything else we treat like a constant. So integrating this, the constant part comes to the outside, and to integrate this, I have x minus 5 to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Okay. So there's not anything that I can cancel here, and I'm kind of left with the integral of this is negative 1 to the n plus 1 n 5 to the n. Actually, let's write this as uh, n times n plus 1 5 to the nth times x minus 5 to the n plus 1. Okay? So now all that's left to do is check our endpoints. And we're kind of running out of space here. But let's see if I can't um, get some space going here somewhere. A little bit. Okay. So if we check 0, which is the first thing we need to do is check 0, and we're placing 0 into this expression, we get negative 1 to the n plus 1. When I replace this with 0, I get negative 5 to the n plus 1 over n times n plus 1 times 5 to the n. Now, <coughs> excuse me, regardless to whether or not this is alternating, we know that this is going to converge. How do we know that this is going to converge? Well, the 5 to the n and the 5 to the n are going to cancel. And then I'm going to have, whether or not this is alternating or not, I'm going to end up with 1 over n squared plus 1. And we know that n squared plus 1 converges. So regardless, it's going to converge um, absolutely, regardless to whether or not it's alternating. So I'm not going to deal whether or not this is alternating. I don't care. I know that n squared plus n will converge. Then I need to check 10. And I have a, 
suspicion that we're going to get the same thing. Because we get negative 1 to the n plus 1, and then we get 5, positive 5 to the n plus 1 over n, n plus 1, and 5 to the nth. Again, the 5 to the nths are, are going to cancel, and then I'm left with n squared, and n squared converges. n squared plus n converges. So this converges on both 0 and 10. So then my answer is um, it converges. Now my, my interval of convergence is 0 to 10, including 0 to 10. Okay? All righty. That is the first video. And um, please watch the second video, which would be the second example.